What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Yamcast. Oh, yes. Pretty much like a year later. It's been resuscitated. It's, it's been a while, actually. It's been a long time, yeah. So, those of you on the internet are familiar with this format. We brought it back, and now it's me, yours truly, Amy Noob, and my buddy, Brandon Altmeyer. How you doing? <laughs> Pretty good. We are uh, bringing it back. He's our new co-host here. Expect to see him in videos and on the Yamcast. We're trying it out. It's the same format you know and love, so we're doing news, a topic of discussion, and then memes. It's a good time. We're going to do it for about an hour, the same way we always did it. Uh, Please let us kind of settle back into our old rhythm. Uh, we got to find our feet again. (laughs) You know, it's kind of like, Brandon, if you haven't been on track for a long time and then you jump back into it like you did earlier this year, (laughs) you were a little little, little out of shape, a little little, little rusty. A little rusty. Suit didn't fit quite right. Yeah, you had to sausage you up in the suit. You had to settle into things. I actually had to use a pair of pliers to get me in the suit, too. That's right. I remember that. I actually had to do that. Yeah, then we got you a new suit. Now you fit well in it, which is good. good. So, in today's Yamcast, we've got a good show for you guys. We are going to be talking about the new Triumph Speed 400. Hey, you guys have been talking to us a lot about this bike. Uh, I want to talk about it. I think it represents a big kind of focus shift for Triumph to be going to the beginner bike market. Lots to talk about there. Moto America put out a cool release talking about how Ducati is blowing up lately. This was dropped in the Yamcast uh, Discord channel, which was pretty cool. I want to talk more about that. And then also... Suzuki's building flying cars. Yeah, I'm not sure about that one, but we'll, we'll look into that. We'll... Jicks or squids of yeah. the future in their flip flops. Of all people that we don't want flying, it's the jicks or squids. Can you imagine <laughs> you as a guy who has flown planes, uh, a DUI on a flying like quadcopter Suzuki <sighs> Jixer? That's pretty good. Y- yeah, but there's going to be a lot more. <sighs> I, I don't know. There's, there's going to be a lot to that. <laughs> there's a lot to Especially that, yeah. if they don't make it. Like automated, and <laughs> yeah. if they give control to people, it's going to be a problem. Yeah, everybody's going to have to have a commercial pilot's license, yeah. which is going to go great. Oh, um, so. Yeah, so lots to talk about there. Then our main discussion question for today's podcast is going to be, what the hell is a beginner bike nowadays? We've seen a huge kind of uptick in displacements and features and what people's perceptions of a beginner bike are. There's a lot to talk about there. And then at the end of the show, we're doing the meme contest. I asked you boys on the Discord server to submit me memes of your motorcycles, and I'm going to rate them and talk about them, and I'm feeling generous. I'm going to give out some prizes for the best ones. We're going to find oh, the yeah. best prizes and give them out. Let's yeah. get them so without further ado, let's get into the news, shall we? All right, so the first thing I wanted to talk about was this new Triumph Speed 400. Um, Brandon, you said you hadn't seen this thing before. Yeah. Because you did a lots of good research before we started today's episode. 100%. How does this strike you? What do you think? It actually looks like a very fun little bike, a little get-up-and-go-around-town type of bike. It's, yeah. It's actually very approachable. I like how, how they proportioned all that stuff. Yeah, it's a, it's a really handsome-looking bike. It Triumph's is. been making some really good-looking motorcycles lately, and I think the, the Speed 400 is no exception. One thing that I thought that they did was cool on this bike is uh, it's like – half of a bonneville engine right here like you can see like the kind of the air cooled yeah. fins and the out of the exhaust over here looks just like the bigger bonneville which is cool i think the gold forks is a nice touch always looks more upmarket yeah. upside down forks it's not neat. it's not a drop dead gorgeous bike but there's nothing really horrible about it either that's that's it's a triumph style that's you know? a proper like, Good looking bike. That's a good looking bike. Yeah, what they do with their bikes, in my opinion, is like they make something that is palatable to a lot of people. Yeah. It doesn't ruffle feathers. Like it just looks good and approachable. Um, so this motorcycle is super important for Triumph because they don't really have like an honest to God beginner bike. Yeah. They just have the Trident 660 right now, which is like mm, like 80 horsepower, triple cylinder, not really yeah. quite a beginner bike. A sub 500 cc, like 40 something horsepower bike perfect yeah like really, that's, where, really that's perfect. where the market is nowadays especially yeah this bike is interesting too because it's a collaboration between triumph and bajaj which is an indian manufacturer mm-hmm. and so i think they're helping to make the engine or make the frames or something like that and so that um they can drive the cost down because yeah. nobody knows i think what the cost is going to be on these just yet in the north american market but i think if they get it under six grand it's kind of a kind of a big yeah one. kind of a deal especially if they hit five grand market oh man type thing you that's that's a <laughs> that you kind of have to buy it it's a good, yeah good deal for it then it's like royal enfield should really start warring a yeah. little bit you know yeah. um 
This is going to be interesting too because there's been all this buzz about Triumph starting their like motocross and off road bikes. Yeah. Have you heard about that? Mm-mm. Yeah. So like I think last year, the year before, they made this big splashy thing about how they're going to start getting into motocross and trail riding. They got Ricky yeah. Carmichael riding the Trident or the Tiger 900 and the 1200 and all that. Yeah, they, they're like they're really they're splashy. Like trying. And we haven't heard anything about it since. And then this single cylinder comes out. And it's like okay, well maybe this is like. Something they're gonna put hmm. in the dirt bikes? I don't know. Is that? Hold on. I don't. I don't know if you said this. Or not. Is that air cooled? Like no, it's it, not. So, so it's just see, it's just made to look like it's air. Cause I don't see yeah, it. You there see, it is. You see that right there? Yeah. That's the radiator. So that's how they do it that's on the Bonnevilles. Thin radiator because you they you put it thin up. and they put it vertical and they kind of just yeah. slide it in there. Because yeah. you scroll up, you can see. You can't really tell it's there. You just yeah. think it's something else to mount. But that's, yeah, they they that's are really radiator. tricky with their packaging, where they get it to be like it looks. It looks really stealth yeah. how it is, you know. But it's actually got some technology in it, which is really cool. No, it's a proper cool thing. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, it's pretty neat. Um, yeah, I I think that the price is really going to be the big thing on this yeah. bike. You know, mm-hmm. once they did re- announce the price, if they get under six grand. I mean, that's a look at that thing. It looks cool. Yeah, that's a cool. I would buy one. That's a cool looking bike. Yeah, um, I think a lot of people are starting to stray away from the super sport thing as much as you know. I want to hold the flag here with the <laughs> ZX4 and the freaking sport bikes and all that stuff. Um, you know, people love these kind of beautiful single round headlight yeah. handlebar kind of motorcycles. They are they are really sweet. Um, so this article is saying it's taken five years of development in partnership with India's Bajaj. Um, the world's manufacturer of two, the world's most valuable manufacturer of two and three wheel vehicles, um, and the stakeholder in KTM's parent company to create the new TR single cylinder platform, which is this thing right here. Um, so it's kind of crazy how like you know Bajaj like holds a bunch in KTM, and then they're also working with Triumph. Like yeah. we're getting like this almost like one singular conglomerate that's making all bikes. That's weird. I never even knew what Bajaj was or Bajaj was. You're showing I, your American yeah, right now. I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, yes. showing showing uh, Americanness. my my born texan yeah you have yeah, a lot to I'm learn very uncultured um, in that i didn't know that they had a substantial stake in ktm That's yeah interesting. yeah they do and then you know cf moto has a stake in ktm too and they make a bunch of engines for them too so it's like all these like companies are starting to like blur together in that way yeah you know and that makes it really interesting from a platform of you know how cheap can we get the price to go, right? Yeah. Because if you're sharing costs and sharing R and D and sharing supply chains with all these companies, the costs fall. Call, yeah, the costs fall way, way, way down. It should, at least. It should, yeah. I mean, even in a world where inflation's pretty crazy, uh, yeah. we're still seeing bikes coming out for under six grand, which is pretty cool. I don't know how long that's going to last. I don't know if in twenty twenty, you know, twenty thirty three or something like that, ten years from now, if yeah. we're still being able to sell six thousand dollar beginner bikes. Um, it might even be that. You know, internal combustion engines can't even be sold by that point. I don't know. Uh, the party's running out, right, yeah. so to speak. But no, no one knows where it's going to go because there's so many different uh, manufacturers out there just trying to make um, e-fuels for certain bikes and to make them just so much more efficient to where they're still a relevant topic. Not mm-hmm. everyone is completely sold on this electrification and stuff like that. And yeah. I've, I've seen people trying to do uh, um, the... Uh, I just blanked on it. The uh, hydrogen powered bikes and stuff mm-hmm. like that. And um, everyone's going in such different directions. And it's weird to see because at first everyone was, you have to electrify, you have to electrify. And now you see this divergence going in several different directions. So yeah. obviously, I don't think that is the only answer. I think a mix of all of it's going to be the way to go. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, have you heard about the Harley Davidson X440? Mm mm. So apparently, I, I just found out about this a couple days ago because I've not been big on motorcycle news because we haven't done the Yamcast until <laughs> we just brought it back. But it's uh, like a rebranded Bajaj machine that they're selling in India with a Harley Davidson badge, kind of like the old Buell Blast. Do you remember that one? Mm-mm. You don't remember the Buell Blast? No. So the Buell Blast, you know about Eric Buell and Buell and yeah, all that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he made like an entry level single cylinder little wretched uh, starter bike. Really? In like the late 2000s, I think, mid 2000s. And they used those bikes for like the Harley Davidson training programs and the, and the learn to rides and stuff. But I think what that engine was, was a Sportster Evo engine that uh-huh. was just like half of it. So like you take this like old lumpy okay. Harley Sportster and you take half of that. And that was the Buell Blast engine, if I remember correctly. So it still weighed 5,000 pounds. Still weighed like 5,000 pounds. <laughs> but Buell Blast owners, they're probably going to sound off now in the comments on the YouTube uh, stream 
Um, but man, they they love the blast. But the I I think the Harley Davidson X440 is kind of like the new Buell Blast. This little single cylinder oh, Harley cool. Davidson thing. Yeah. So they're all sharing parts. They're all doing stuff. Um, but what I think is cool about this Triumph is it's a 398cc single, which is yeah. bigger than the Royal Enfield 350s. Okay. It's more sophisticated. It's liquid cooled. Um, that's really a lot. A lot more bang for buck than yeah. the Royal Enfield, honestly. Like people love the Royal Enfields because they're charming and they're cheap, but this and, is better, dude. It's like, in it's around that forty better. horsepower range, and it revs at least to eight thousand. I'd imagine the red lines yeah. around ten. That's a pretty good that's range a right there. Good little motor. That's some good torque. The, uh, what, 20, 28 feet foot pounds of torque. Yeah, the Royal Enfield is like twenty horsepower and twenty foot pounds of torque. Yeah, it's kind hmm. of yeah, it's a little that's a pretty cool looking bike. That's actually I might go buy one. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so they're going to make it in a speed variant, which is this one, and mm-hmm. a scrambler variant, which has the 19-inch the wheel and the knobby or tires mm-hmm. and those sort of things. The handlebar guards. Scheme, the handlebar guards, like that. yeah. That's cool. Both are road-going motorcycles, yeah. but, um, yeah, like, you know, you're getting the Bybree brake, which is the Brembo subsidiary, mm-hmm. kind of like on the KTM 390, uh, show a big piston, upside-down forks, like... There's some cool stuff in this bike. Really? I think there's a lot to be excited about. I mean, that dash looks awesome. Yeah. Oh, that's slick. Yeah. It's, that's it's, slick. It's cool, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think people were really stoked on this. I think Moto Bob made a video about this, and it got like 400K views in like two days. People were like rabid about this. But yeah, it seems like this article saying that around the $5,000 mark is likely. Mm-hmm. Um, that's competitive. That's very competitive, That's if, especially if they can hit that mark. Obviously, it's going to be still, what, 65 7 out the door. Yeah. But that's still a very good price, especially for people starting out. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so the Speed Twin, I mean, or I almost call it Speed Twin. Jesus, the Speed 400, <laughs> um, big stamp of approval for me. One thing I've noticed is they don't show the other side of the bike where the other pipe would be on the Bonneville, like right there. I wonder what it looks like from the left-hand side of the bike. I don't, That's I've true. Never We've seen only seen the it. right-hand side, yeah. Yeah. So I'm excited about this. If I can get my hands on one, this would definitely be the next yeah. modern classic because this is a really cool little motorcycle. But, Brandon, you want to move on to the next topic? Let's do it. I'm excited about the next topic. Yeah, the next that. topic, we're talking <laughs> about how Ducati is crushing it, apparently. Yeah. According to Moto America, they're hot on the heels of Ducati dominating the super sport category in Motor America, the new generation, right? Which, the V2. Which is crazy. Yeah, the V2's doing well, and even the uh, Superbike, they've finally got that thing at least somewhat working. And in yeah, World Superbike, doing they're doing phenomenally. I think Bautista's every single race is one Bas- first place, basically. Basically, yeah. or he's at least up there. Yeah. Um, but what's crazy to me is you, th- you see all these Ducati sport bikes doing well in the sport, and yet this article tells us that the Multistrada <laughs> is the number one selling bike for them, which is baffling yeah. to me. Yeah, it's kind of that old, you know, it's race on Sunday, sell on Monday. And yeah. they took a lot of the race bike technology and put it in the Multistrada V4. Yeah. It's a different engine, but it's, you know, similar. Yeah. But yeah, That's a, I, the, that's a the, tall, heavy bike. Are though. you surprised, though, that the Multi is like, you I, know, um, number one? I guess if you, if everyone that has a multi loves the multi, and yeah. people that ride multis are like, oh, I'm gonna get a multi type thing. Yeah, but that's it's never a bike that. Hey, what bike do you want? It's never on my list until yeah. we start talking about the multi because it's awesome. It's an awesome bike. Oh yeah, but I don't initially like tomorrow. I'm not gonna be like, hey babe, let's go look, go get a multi strata. <laughs> It's not going to be that conversation. Well, it's a as we saw earlier, it's a twenty seven thousand dollar motorcycle yeah. starting price, so it's not cheap. Um, but you know, it can do a lot of things. It can. Uh, do you know about my history with the Multistrada V4? I do not. So Ducati reached out to me a while back. This was, I think, two years ago. Um, and they were like, Hey, you know, Multistrada V4 is launching. Like, do you want to check it out? And I was like, <laughs> sure. Yeah. So they hooked it up via Ducati Austin. I got it for like two days. I rode it around. And, uh, in my review, because it was like, you know, it had enduro mode and all mm-hmm. this stuff and blah, blah, blah. It's this big, huge bike. I was kind of like, man, this bike's trying to be a lot of things, yeah. uh, and I ultimately think it should just stick to being a road bike. I don't know why it has all these off-road modes. I think I called it a refrigerator. Um, <laughs> it's, a, it's a heavy bike. <laughs> I think I, I think I was like, yeah, it's kind of like a fridge, you know. They did not like me at no, all. No, I bet. That. They never, didn't call you back after that. Either. Never heard back from Ducati <laughs> ever again after that. So like, Ducati, if you're listening, I'm sorry. You know, send me send me a Panigale V4. Like, yeah. send me some cool stuff. I won't say bad things about it. Maybe that's, I will. You know, that's maybe the I won't. weird thing is the multi 
isn't bad in anything that no, it does, it's a great bike. but it's not fantastic in anything it does either. Yeah, but it's, that's how all those bikes are. The big, tall that's adventure fair, yeah, bikes. That's fair. That's, they, they don't particularly go around corners that great. They don't particularly do anything that great. They're a jack but, of all trades. Yeah. And that, I don't want to know why it's the most. <laughs> <laughs> like they've sold they almost 7,000 units, 6,500 units. So far. So in far. That's nuts. That's a lot of Where did the appeal? Like, are we not watching the the off-road part of this sport that's <laughs> dragging people to buy the Multistrada? Like, maybe, this, maybe we're just a, in our sport bike lane, but yeah, I know, I know I adventure bikes are big now, and I think people want to travel with their bike. And, you know, taking a step back, maybe it's people who are getting this bike, as we mentioned, to yeah. do a lot of things with it. Like, you could take a Multistrada on track. Mm-hmm. You could. You can, I, don't, I wouldn't. I, <laughs> you well, could. I wouldn't either. You could. You could have a fun day with it. You can take it on a big tour. Yeah. You can take it down a gravel road. Yeah. You can put the misses on the back and take her out to coffee. You can do a lot with it. So if as a as a case for the one bike garage, Multistrada, not bad. And it's not a horrible choice, but I feel like yeah. there's better choices and cheaper choices, I feel. H two S X. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> I don't know. It's that's that's weird to me, but I yeah. honestly think that a big portion of these sales uh, creeping upwards is their success in racing. I, mean, I, I feel like it is because the racing is growing. A lot of people are getting attention to it, especially yeah. because these new series are coming out, like Drive to Survive for Formula One and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Amazon's working on one too for MotoGP. Yeah, and there's a lot of uh, attention being grabbed by that, especially overseas. Mm-hmm. Um, so I am not surprised that Ducati's doing well or motorcycles in general are doing well mm-hmm. in racing. It's just it's weird to me that the Multistrada was the one to say, "Hey, we're leading the way." I figured it'd be the V two at least. I thought it would be too, but then you think about how most people want a bike that works in a lot of places and is comfortable to ride. You know, that's a big thing. They're comfortable. Yeah. They don't want scary. Even though Multistrada V4 is a beast of a bike. Yeah, you walk into the dealership, it's the tallest thing in there. It's a beast, yeah, and it makes a ton of power. It's fast. It's not slow. Um, And it's heavy. I feel like I need to reiterate that. It's a heavy bike. I'm a small dude. It's it's a heavy bike. (laughs) Um, But it kind of begs the question, too, you know, with Ducati growing and dominating and racing again Mm -hmm. and doing all these things, um, do you see a world in which Ducati becomes a bit of like a mainstream motorcycle brand more so than it is now because i feel like people still gravitate to the big four right you they they're always going to go to japanese bikes yeah. honda is the number one brand yeah. you can't beat honda but i honestly could see a world in the next five ten years where ducati could be second because of how much brand recognition there is um possibly i could i could see that's going to be a lot of brand recognition but it's not like ducati's unknown right now anyways they're known oh yeah they are it's just they're known as the premier bike i don't know as the rich guy exactly i don't think there's ever going to be a time where it's like what do i get today a honda or ducati it's yeah that'll it'll be okay i'm getting a honda because i can't afford a ducati even though even the words we say we're like oh i'm getting honda and versus a ducati exactly you want to say different you know what i mean you gotta you gotta sigh through it yeah yeah (laughs) no it's that's the that's the type of bike like Oh, I've always wanted a... For sure, for sure. And it's always inserted with most likely a Ducati or a very high-end BMW. Yeah. You know, it's not a part of the... high-end, yeah. Exactly. You know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of Porsche's strategy Uh where they will sell a ton of SUVs Mm -hmm. to support these crazy race cars that they build. I think Ducati's kind of like that too. They'll sell a bunch of Multistratas and Monsters and Scramblers especially to then build V4Rs and stuff. You I know? mean, that's what Dodge did really well is they made a car that everyone wanted with the power and it did things and they made it for a price that the normal person could afford. That's why that car exploded the way it did. It's Which car is this? The, the uh, Challenger. Oh, the Challenger. The, yeah. you, got, you got the different variants. Yeah, you have a 100 grand version, but even that for a lot of people is a lot more accessible than a Two hundred, three hundred thousand dollar Porsche. Yeah, and that's what Dodge did really well. What? But I, Ducati's not going to do that. No, They're going to have. But the but the badge though. We were talking about the badge. That's true. Right? Yeah, the badge you costs. A, you money. want a hundred thousand dollar Dodge? Yeah, or I don't want a hundred thousand dollar Porsche. Porsche. Exactly. See, no, you're paying. Yeah, you're going to. Yeah, I think the Ducati is the same thing, right? Like you could go and spend thirty G's on a Honda Goldwing. Gold, yeah. Or you can get a Ducati Multistrada, right? Like it's. If you're vain and into that sort of thing, I, mean, I guess yeah, it makes sense. That's fair. No, that's a very fair point. Where does the V2 start at? I think the V2 is under twenty grand. 
I think it's like not, 18, I, 17, 5, something it's like not that. It's completely bad. I think because I remember I when we got it, it was the same price as the R1, and we were like, damn, you get a lot more bike when you get the R1, but it's not the same thing, you know? Yeah, because it's, it's Ducati. It's Ducati. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. I don't think it's going to be a household name like you think, but I do think... I think it is already. Honestly, I don't like... You, well, I'll tell you this. You go to up to a normie and you say, I've got an Aprilia. They'll say, I have no idea what that is. You say, I got a Ducati. They're like, all right, Yeah, that's but that's cool. always been known. It's like, hey, I got a Lambo. You know, it's yeah. it's always been, okay, everyone knows what everyone it is, knows. but not everyone has one no, as a household. Not everyone has that's one, what yeah. I mean. I, I think they're definitely getting to that point. I think if they keep winning and racing and keep they, dominating, yeah. they'll be much more premier is what I'm saying. That's fair. Yeah. I, they're going to come out with an even more expensive version of the V4R? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> and then people will keep crying more in World yeah, Superbike. They're exactly. like, it's too expensive. It's too, it's too fast. It's a $100,000 bike. Oh, yeah. yeah. They don't race the Super Legera. They could. They, they could homologate that could. and then go race that they thing. They could. Then you're like, oh, you're really going to start crying now. Uh-huh. <laughs> Oh, we got second. I guess we got to race the Super Legier now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Dang. Dang. Toprak beat us again. <laughs> um, all right. So that's the Ducati news. Anything else you want to say about Ducati sales? Picking no, up? Doing pretty I, well? They're, they're just doing well. I mean, they deserve it. They've, they're doing well in every form of racing. Even, uh, we didn't even mention, MotoGP. They're yeah. dominating right now. Yeah. So uh, they're doing well everywhere. And I think Ducati did it right in that they're racing on Sunday and they're mm-hmm. selling on Monday. Mm-hmm. They kept to that old strategy but they had to get the bike right first to do it. Yeah. And they got they got the bike right. One of the craziest uh, bits of news that I read about Ducati, I don't know if it's true, it, it's kind of a rumor, but it's kind of <laughs> like if you add up how much they spent in racing over mm-hmm. the last, like from 2007 when they won GP until mm-hmm. 22 when they won again, yeah. I think it's like 700 million euros. I wouldn't be surprised. I honestly wouldn't be surprised because they've gone through so many different variants I of know of the v4s and they came out with new designs of motors and yeah. i remember when the v4 originally came out it was a big thing because it was a big technological advance for them mm-hmm. to design an engine that way yeah and to they, go from only making two cylinders to four is a big deal yeah exactly and the way that they did it too it, they they took what they were learning and mm-hmm. applied it and they just kept taking notes and it got better and better and better to the point where they're like okay cool we're going to go back to making two cylinders and make a V2. Mm-hmm. And obviously our V4 is working really well. So we're going to start putting that in everything. And it yeah. worked. Yeah. And it just, they let it simmer. And now it's all rising up. I agree. Yeah. It's good news for Ducati. Mm-hmm. No, it's, it's a scary time if you're Yamaha, Suzuki, or Honda, I yeah. would say. But yeah, Ducati's doing great things. But speaking of Japanese manufacturers, we have our last <laughs> bit of news, uh, which I have a I have a lot to talk about. Oh, this gosh. we don't even have photos, but um, this just came out of nowhere, and and the the timeline is insane. Mm-hmm. This article which says flying cars to be introduced as early as 2025 says Suzuki. So let's read the key takeaways here, and then we'll start kind of <laughs> digesting this a little bit and making fun of it. Uh, Suzuki partners with SkyDrive to develop electric flying cars. <laughs> I wasn't ready for that. <laughs> Aiming to revolutionize transportation by offering faster point-to-point travel and reducing travel or traffic congestion. Flying cars have environmental benefits and potential use as ambulances, but their scalability and infrastructure planning are key challenges. Proper skyways, insurance, and service stations are needed for safe integration. Brandon, you have a commercial. I don't. Do you have your commercial pilot's mm-hmm. license? You do. You have flown things before. Yeah. Um, how does this strike you? Initially, um, so th- this caught me off guard because obviously I was under the assumption that Suzuki's car division had shut down. <laughs> At least in the U.S. it did. Yeah, that was accurate. No. I didn't realize that they were... Strong in India. I didn't strong. know that. So when this came across, I was like, oh, okay. Um, it's weird because they're pulling out of MotoGP and they're saving money on so many different things. Yeah. And then you tell me that their car industry is strong. I'm like, okay. I never knew their cars to be reliable to begin with. <laughs> um, when I did see them, they weren't necessarily in the best of shape. Fair. And unless you have the old tried and true like K5 Jixer, you're not really getting a whole reliable thing either. So Are you're you always me being you worked on. You want to see a K5 Jixer quadcopter? I mean, that, that would. Takes I feel like that would be more reliable than. Than this, something that's yeah. industry leading. Yeah, Suzuki hasn't really been known to do that. 
I just that's don't. concerning too, especially because the clientele isn't necessarily the safest of clientele. Yeah, it's kind of like to say it's going to come out as early as 2025. Yeah, we're a year just, and a half away from that. that. We're just going to have flying cars by Suzuki that are electric. I I just <laughs> I don't know, man. Um, also, you were asking about this. Are these going to be autonomous? Because yeah. if they're not. How are you going to train people to fly? Exactly. Because That's really especially hard. in the U.S., maybe in different parts of the world, I know at least in Europe and the U.S., there's air spaces and you have to have licenses to fly in them and clearances. So unless they're autonomous, I'm not trusting Joe Schmo to go fly his helicopter to go be <laughs> an ambulance driver. I know. I'm not trusting that. But at the same time, if it is autonomous, it can't be an ambulance driver. You can't. Yeah. You can't, you're not going to load the guy up. Yeah. And the, uh, there's nobody there. Somebody's so someone's half has to fly unless there's just going to be one paramedic that just tends to you with the yeah. autonomous helicopter that may or may not fly to where you need to go. I'll tell you this. If I needed medical assistance urgently, let's say I had a terrible accident, and out of the sky, a K5 powered Suzuki <laughs> quadcopter shows up You'd be like, with a dude in flip flops, yeah, like, I'd be like, I'd rather die. Yeah. I, I like my odds here on the ground <laughs> with my femur broken and my bleeding out yeah. more than getting on that thing. Yeah. I'm no. not getting on it. I, yeah, 100%. And that's... I, my phone doesn't even take me to the right destination sometimes, <laughs> all right? E- even though I enter it how it needs to be entered, it still doesn't take me to the right Quadcopter place. Quadcopter just freaking flies you over the ocean. Just exactly. Just keeps going until it falls. You just drop. Yeah, or it lands on me when it's trying to pick me up. Yeah. Yeah, yeah if you guys have ever seen like autonomous drones trying to do stuff, <laughs> just imagine that, but like a hundred times bigger and with people. See, um, but at the same time, they're not accurate at all, as we've known, well, at least yeah. in some scenarios. But then we see all these drone demonstrations of showing us fireworks, but with drones and yeah. faces and stuff like that. It's pretty crazy. It, it's maybe insane. We're just, maybe I'm just behind the curve and there's all this you know stuff happening with flying cars and drones and stuff. So let's see here. The article says it's a long awaited technology. SkyDrive has been testing flying car concepts and prototypes since 2014. They first collaborated with Suzuki last year, intending to create a future where everyone in Japan and worldwide has access to EV tolls as their daily transportation, which I assume is like electric vehicle something in flight. I don't know. I don't know what that stands for. Uh, (laughs) Flying vehicles are one of the fastest growing types of transportation with firms like Toyota and Japan Airlines joining the market through development-capable startups. Electric vertical uh, and takeoff. Oh, nice. Yeah, that's right. Uh, Vertical takeoff and landing. Yeah, electric vertical takeoff uh, and something landing. Yeah, you're right. Um, (laughs) Sorry. Uber Elevate wants to offer an air taxi in the foreseeable future with prices equal to Uber Black's luxury automobile service. What a flex, right? Like you finish up your like you, you go out take your girl out for dinner and you're like, nah, baby, we're, we're not taking Uber Luxury. We're taking Uber Elevate. A fucking on, helicopter comes out of the I sky. I would like to now reiterate, my phone doesn't take me to the right place sometimes. I can't even get an Uber to show up to me half the time. So. so. I don't think it's going to be happening the way people uh, think it's going. You just hear like, like super loud blades whirring. It's like, your ride is yeah. here. I'm like, I know it's yeah. here. It's just like coming down from Heard the sky. It. <laughs> I'm aware. Like your ride will arrive shortly. No, you know what? I can see it. It's right there. Yeah. So it is cool that they're vertical takeoff Hold because it, as this thing is saying, you know, building runways is insane and we can't have mass transit for runways the crazy part about this as a person who really loves mass transit and like developed cities what problem is this solving dude like why don't we just build trains like what are we doing like trying to build like luxury tiny airborne vehicles for like rich dickheads to fly around in you're you're asking that question i am we just had a submarine problem not too long ago. I mean, I didn't think that was going to be an issue either. Fair. So, Fair. and now there's, we're sending each other to space. All the rich dudes are sending each other to space. You know what? It's just Fair. another thing. But I just read this a little bit more and it said, hold on, um, it's expected to minimize traffic and provide speedier transit choices for business travelers. Individual UAMs will cost more than $1.2 million in the early stage, $600,000 in the short term, and $200,000 in the long term. For me, that's a very hefty price tag. But for more expensive folk that can afford it, that's that's a drop in the bucket. Yeah. And I'll, it it's not... I don't think it's worth it, especially if it can only carry, let's say, four people, like a regular Uber. Yeah. That's $1.2 million to carry four people. I can go 
buy a Boeing for seventy million dollars, and I can carry a hundred and fifty people. You know, yeah. The proportion, I don't think, is there. No, you don't. I mean, the ticket. And I can go much be, further. You too. can go further. The ticket prices would be a lot higher. Exactly. This, this seems like very small, like kind of puddle jumpy flights it yeah. would take. You know, um, and I mean, I can see that there's some uses for it. It's saying, oh, like it'd be safer than a helicopter, and you can be for first responders and all that. But like. I'm trying to understand, like, I guess where it would land, how it would land, how it would work versus a helicopter, right? Because, like, a helicopter is kind of the same thing I in can, a way. I mean, it has the huge blades and stuff, but this has to have, I guess, some sort of, like, fan or blade or something to create lift, right? Well, yeah, it's going to have to. It's going to be a helicopter, but with four yeah. on each corner. It's a quad, it, yeah. yeah, and and I get that skyports are cheaper to create than, you know... Air, air, regular airports and building roads and trains and all that stuff. Yeah, but a company doesn't take on that investment. Mm. The state, the city, or the country oh, yeah. takes on that investment, not the company. And the article says that it, it they're making it cheaper because the company is making this. Mm. You know what I mean? I don't th- think the mindset is there because the city wants to build a bigger airport. Because of the return on investment of uh, uh, visitors and mm-hmm. communication, you know, all, all this stuff that could possibly happen, bring more jobs, more business, more economy, all, all that stuff. There's a reason for it. Yeah. But for a company to go, hey, build a, uh, we will build a Skyport or you build a Skyport because it's cheaper and we can put these things here. The, the return on investment isn't as much and it takes a lot longer because there's less people. Mm-hmm. Airports make sense because you can fit a shiz load of people in one place. Yeah. So, and trains are the same way. Yeah. So it's... They're efficient and they're, you can put just more people on them. Exactly. Yeah. One thing that this article talked about that I wanted to talk about a little bit just because I, I don't really agree with it is this idea that, you know, if you build these like skyways that these things operate on, um, you know, you can then flexibly move the routes in a way that you can't with like trains or roads and stuff like that. Yep. But I ask to the people who are talking that saying that that's a cool idea. You look at like highway congestion, right? Yep. And how ugly and horrible it is. You just yep. look out and just see a sea of cars just sitting there. Do we really want our skies to have a bunch of like freaking little planes flying around? And that's around, the other know? thing. Actually, we had this problem today and I don't trust batteries that much. We have yeah. these things flying around. Yeah, it's a hundred percent charged, but then it just stopped working on you. Yeah, it happens. Yeah. stuff happens. People have their Teslas. You have happen to have a backup all, system. Yeah, it happens all the time. Yeah, and if they don't, and they're just going, "Hey, this works great," there's gonna be that time down the road that one battery just stops working, and now yeah. you have this thing in the air falling wherever it's gonna hit. Yeah. It could be into a building, into cars, you know, into mm-hmm. the congestion that it's supposed to be helping, but doesn't. Yeah. yeah, I think, you know, obviously cars crash all the time, yeah. and it's pretty terrible what happens to them. People die every day in cars, mm-hmm. but people live in car crashes very often. Yeah. I think you falling out of the sky. Very few people survive. Not that. many people survive. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's a pretty violent, horrible way to go. You're yeah. falling straight into the ground. Yeah. Um, I don't know. This this is some pretty crazy stuff. Uh, I thought it was funny from our Yamcast perspective because it is Suzuki that's helping them for whatever reason. And <laughs> of the, all people to the, be helping, the them. jokes make themselves. You, you know, that's what we do here. Uh, but it'd be this, different if uh, Boeing or Airbus would be like, "Hey, we were developing this." We're like, okay, cool, this makes sense. So yeah. it's, it's y'all's business. But <laughs> Suzuki, <laughs> Suzuki's like, let me get in on that. Yeah, I'm just gonna try fly, it out. Flying cars, you flying said? cars. <laughs> They're like, that's cheaper than GP. It's not, Let's go it's into not that. really a flying car. It's a helicopter. Just stop <laughs> saying it's a flying car. It's a helicopter. Yeah. Because a car implies that I it's, have control of it. It's a quad. It's a quadcopter. Yeah, it's a it's a quadcopter or a drone, mm-hmm. a, a flying car, people think Jetsons and all that stuff. It's not the same it's thing. It's not. Yeah. Because even if it's AI or autonomous, I feel like a car or a motorcycle has you you can control it. Otherwise, yeah. it's just another it's a train it's a, a mm-hmm. plane or something like that it has autonomy to it that it can operate by itself like yeah. all the trains at the dfw airport are operated um mostly at least by themselves they yeah. operate by themselves so there is oversight to where people can take over and do a mm-hmm. lot of the time to make sure things work as they should but a car implies to me that i have some sort of control and i know for safety purposes, they're not going to do that. No. And I don't trust things enough. I may be just old in my ways. I don't trust these things. I'm just, just me, though. 
No, that's fair. I honestly think we could spend an entire podcast talking about Suzuki's flying cars, but we will have to move on to the next portion of our podcast, which is our main discussion point. Yep. What the hell is going on with beginner bikes? So I get asked a lot, Yam, what is your favorite motorcycle accessory? And to be honest, this is usually what I reach out for. This is called a rock form, and it's a phone mount for your motorcycle that's going to change your life. Rock form phone mounts are some of the best in the business because they basically defined the category. They're an all aluminum construction. They feature a vibration dampener. And to be honest, you can put these things on just about any motorcycle with a handlebar or clip-ons as well. They feature a stem mount or a handlebar setup that is pretty awesome. The first step is to get yourself the Rockform phone case, and that kind of opens up the whole ecosystem of products for you. Fans of the Yam are going to get 25% off by using the link down below and my code YN25. You're not going to want to miss it. That's a pretty good discount that they're offering my subscribers. So check out Rockform products. They are my go-to motorcycle accessory. This handlebar mount has been very, very useful for me when I'm traveling or just when I'm out somewhere on location and I need GPS on my phone quickly to access. So hit that link down below to Rockform and use the code YN25 for 25% off. Alrighty, folks, second part of the podcast here. We're talking about what the hell is a beginner bike nowadays? I was thinking about this today, Brandon, because displacements are creeping up, power is creeping up. We've kind of squeezed all these bikes to the edge of A2 compliance and beyond a little bit. You come from a long history of riding little bikes, mini bikes. Yeah. You grew up riding them. And even for me, when I started riding, my R3 was a, kind of a cheater 250, and I was really stoked mm -hmm. on it. I was like, oh, this is cool. Like, it's, a, it's a faster yeah. 250. I love it. Now people are like, ah, oh, 450 cc's. That's a that's that's, that's a baby bike. Change. Oh, R sevens a beginner yeah. bike. Where where do you fall in all this? What do you think? Uh, I don't. I mean, obviously we we progress with the times, and especially as technology increases, they can make one thousands more rideable and stuff like that, and six hundreds more accessible in the way they deliver power. But yeah, like I when I grew up and riding, I, there was adults riding fifty cc bikes and racing with kids and 65 cc's and 85 cc's and that was yeah. the mini back then the biggest mini you could have at the time was was a 250 yeah and then the 300 came out and everyone was like okay cool whatever it's just a fuel injected 250 which is basically what it was it was yeah. a cleaned up version of the 250 and it made sense um and then it just kept developing and now 250 is like the smallest one you can get mm -hmm. and the 400s are the biggest you can get and it it's weird because at least in the sport, it it feels like we're in the same space, even though the bikes have changed a lot, and it's yeah. it's really weird. And I I feel like it's going to keep going up. Actually, I'm not. But gonna at lie. some point, it just feels silly, right? Like at some point, you're like, hey, look, it's a it's a 600 cc parallel twin bike that makes 72 horsepower. Yeah, it's like it, an R7. It like, seems ridiculous to us, but back when I started. A 300 was ridiculous. You I know? suppose, yeah. It, it changes. Uh, I guess with, like you were saying, with proper power manicuring and all exactly. this stuff, like in theory, you could get this bigger bike and then later unlock it or whatever. Exactly. I, I still personally think that these bikes with these power modes are not appropriate because it just you just got to do that yeah. and then you have full power. Just, yeah, just and simple not knowing how to do it and accidentally putting it on the wrong mode, yeah. you're in trouble. Yeah, For absolutely. For example, you were riding the H2 today. Yes. And... I'm sure that there's some, but like at some point, and I don't, because mine's an older generation, maybe the new one, you can put it in rain mode or low yeah. power mode. And then, you know, oh, you have a 600. Yeah. You want to know what it feels like. Yeah. You want to, you're, you're like, you're like I'm so curious to yeah. like know. You, it, you get mad at work or you'll have a long day. You just want to be like, you know what? I, it's my bike. Yeah. I, I want to do what I want to do. I'm exactly. not going to be, do, listen to Joe Schmo over there. He didn't mm -hmm. buy the bike. It's mine. I'm going to try it. Yeah. It, yeah. There's no self control in that. And yeah. It's, so in that, I don't light, think it's going to get to a 1,000. I feel like 1,000 is the top, minus the yeah. minus the Ducatis, um, the 1100s and all that. Yeah, yeah. W when the 1290s and whatever it is, it's it's a twin and yeah. it's a V pattern. It's slightly different in the way it delivers power. So I feel like there's small exceptions for it, but I feel like 1,000 will always be the top. But definitely the bottom is rising. Where it will stop, I don't know. That's I the question. Think, 
I also think these manufacturers, in order to keep the same amount of power given emissions regulations, they keep yeah. having to increase displacement, right? Yeah. You see that in the middleweight naked bike category mm-hmm. where a middleweight now is like 900 cc's. Yeah. The, the Gixxus 8S and the MT-09 and all those bikes, they're all these huge engines, which they are. Like we, we joke, yeah. oh, middleweight's 900, it's a small bike. That's not a small bike. A 900 cc bike a is a, big bike. that's a big bike. Yeah. It's a powerful bike. But we're now just used to that size, yeah. like you were saying. So we're, I guess, more used to bigger torque motorcycles now. Like and that's what the whole market looks like. I feel like they turned to torque as a as an easy way to get out of putting a, a crap load of horsepower into things to keep the speeds down, yeah. but keep the thrill up type of thing. Well, that's the thing, right? Because like um, more horsepower is more speed, right? Yeah. More torque is more immediate fun, yeah. which is good for street riding. Horsepower, how fast I hit the wall, torque, how far I bring the wall with me. Sure. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it, 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 it's... Where the top or where the top of the beginner bike category ends up going, we know we may not know because as soon as they make the technology cheap enough to get all these electronic suites that the one thousands have onto the six six sixties and the six fifties or even the four hundreds, I mean the ZX four has a bunch of technology on it. It does, yeah. It's trickling down. Exactly. I mean, so whenever yeah. it becomes cheap enough for everything to have it. I I can foresee very easily the jump going from a 400 to more of a 500 to maybe one day even the the 650. I think the 650s, the 660s, and the R7s are a bit a bit out of reach for the the yeah. beginner bike. Um, but I feel I do feel like the bottom will keep rising. Um, yeah. I feel like the 400 is. I feel a market change coming because yeah. only Kawasaki does it. Really? Well, now the Cal- CF Moto has that 450. Yeah, SS, and you, know? you got KTM doing the 390, 390 which it technically not... falls in the category. Yeah. But I think we're not that far away from seeing a KTM RC450 using that I, CF Moto engine because yeah, they I, share parts. I don't I don't see it far either, but the question begs, why hasn't Yamaha done something like that? It's a great question. I mean, they're, they're the powerhouse of the of the big four. I have and no idea. They can easily just, boop, there's a 400. You know, It's pretty easy for them. So why haven't they? Where do they see the market going? That's the question. I I, I don't know. I, I think Yamaha at this point, I mean, the R3 came out in 2015, I think. Yeah. So it's been seven and a half years now. Um, and they haven't really, they, they updated the plastics and changed a couple things, but like that bike's basically the same mm-hmm. still. The Ninja 400 came out in 2018, I think. Mm-hmm. And that's that's that was, what, five years ago now? And that's and, a while back. And Yamaha knows that no one really... I mean, people obviously still race their bikes, but there's no like spec series with their bikes anymore. There no. used to be a couple of series out there that was just all right. You o- can only ride R threes. Mm-hmm. That's not the case anymore. No. E- almost everyone, especially in the uh, World Super Sport three hundred class, um, it's all Kawasaki four hundreds, and they have to know that. And they, they, I know they're coming up with an answer to it, and I, I can foresee well, it's it going been five years. Since, because like the Ninja 400 came out, and everyone thought eventually Yamaha's gonna make an R4 or something like that. And you would think because it, it made sense. Didn't get anything. I, I they feel must like, see good sales. They must be like, we don't need to build a possibly, bigger one. Possibly, maybe there's a sector somewhere in the world that we don't know that's just we yeah. want more R3s type of thing, which is fine. Yeah. But I, I don't first. I can very easily foresee if Yamaha went okay. Here's a 500, and this is the new technology with it mm-hmm. type thing. I mean, the ZX4 has traction control and stuff like that, so. Here's all this electronic suites on this 500, yeah, and that's the new beginner bike. I can foresee that happening. Yeah, what's interesting for me is like the past couple of weeks. Um, I don't know when these videos will go live, but I'm just gonna let you guys know. <laughs> I rode an R660 yesterday to kind of compare against the, the ZX4, and then we had the R7 versus ZX4 that's yeah. gonna go live. Honestly, you look at the ZX4 and you're like, oh, it makes 75 horsepower. The way it makes that power is so docile mm-hmm. compared to an R7, an R660. It's a very approachable bike. Very approachable. And I think that that kind of bike makes more sense for beginners than a super torquey bike. Because you think about what a beginner does wrong. It's low speed, choppy too, yeah, stuff. Yeah, too much And throttle, if you have but... a ton of torque, it, the, the mistakes are punished much harder. Yes, you know? Absolutely. But if those challenges can be overcome, they stay with the platform much longer. True. But at the same time, manufacturers may not want that because they want you to buy the next step bike. That's why, bikes, that's why yeah. there's a ZX4, ZX6, ZX10. You know, yeah. that, That's why there's a tiered system. There's always has been. Mm-hmm. I don't know where the shift is going to come from to 
take that away. Yeah. I feel like at some point it will. I, I just don't know what it's going to go to. It feels like most of these manufacturers have a three bike stepping stone. Yeah. They have your beginner bike, your intermediate bike, and your kind of top dog, yep. right? KTM 390, 890, 1290. Well, they have the 790 too. I don't know why they have that, but it's <laughs> I mean, the 890. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I think that's the old one, yeah. And then Yamaha's the R3, R7 now, I guess, and then yeah. a gigantic jump to the R1. Because R7 the, or R1 is like a stratospheric leap. R3 to R7 is a stratospheric leap. It's that's pretty a, big. Their, theirs is pretty gapped, whereas the, like, the Kawasaki with the ZX4 to the ZX6, it makes sense because yeah. it's just it's a tougher. general 600 to the uh, ZX10. Mm-hmm. And Yamaha's, you can argue, it actually goes from the R3 to the R6 to the ZX10, but they haven't really updated the R6. I know people are going to say, oh, but the 2020, they just updated it, whatever. It's, they also it's stopped different. making them. Oh, yeah. They, I forgot that. They yeah. did stop making them. They don't them. make them anymore. So, yeah, it is, it is the R7. The R7 yeah. I completely forgot about that. They're supposed to be coming out with an R9 based on the MT-09, but we haven't seen it yet. But, yeah, yeah like these, this kind of stepping stone idea is where it begins. And then, I don't know, for me, it's like that's why – you know, bikes like the Royal Enfield 350s are selling so yeah. well because they are so approachable. Yeah. You know, I think if we keep pushing this envelope of like, yeah, your beginner bike needs to make 75 horsepower, yeah. then 50 foot pounds of torque. It's like, guys, like that's kind of fast. It's, like, yeah. Calm, you know, calm down. Just out. Yeah. And, you can like, start on a slow bike. It's fine. It doesn't matter. We, men- we mentioned, uh, at least in the videos that we filmed today a couple of times, uh, that we are still learning uh, stuff on 400s. <laughs> yeah. Uh, on a... Ninja for That's because we're like, so humble. Okay. We're, we have so much humility. <laughs> right. Um, but we're, we're not the fastest people no. a, on the, in that category. No, we're, we're still learning. Yeah. And it, it's a 400. It has no power and no torque. Yeah. So and yet why, there are still things that we can do with it to go faster. Yeah, and that's how the beginner bike category, at least used to, it, it has always been, at least until very recently, it was no power, no torque. Mm-hmm. It was barely enough to get the bike moving as itself. The 250 doesn't go anywhere. Yeah. You can drop that clutch and it doesn't really do anything. No. You have to kind of work to get it to wheelie type of stuff. <laughs> but and nowadays, I mean, 400 has a bit of punch behind it yeah, type stuff. It's, it's not a lot. Don't get me wrong. No. It's not a lot. You can but still crack it wide open pretty yeah, much everywhere. I've yeah. seen someone loop a 400 before. So it's <laughs> it happens. I mean, you see... Uh, the race restart that we had at Hallett. Yeah. My brother-in-law almost loops his he 400. almost loops the 400, Like, yeah. it, it's a bit much. Hey, if you drop a clutch, you drop a clutch. You, <clears> know? you drop a clutch, you drop a clutch. And there should be happen. consequences if you drop a clutch. If you're on a boom BD250, though, nothing happens. I tried. It's fair. That I is had fair. it pinned a red line, and I let it go, and it didn't do anything. <laughs> you just like, oh. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you're like, oh, that's a proper start. Okay. Yeah. No, it, where... I, I can foresee it going to, uh, as high as about a 500, but then you really, really start getting into the question of you're making just bikes in general unapproachable yeah. because then you start getting into that's my the, thing. the too aggressive category. Mm-hmm. And that's where I think the like the 660 and stuff falls because way too much. I, I would if maybe you had, you know, off roading experience or something like that. Mm-hmm. But OK, cool. Your first time on the street or first time at the track. I'd be like, OK, sure. Let's go with 660. I wouldn't suggest it. But if that's what you want to do, that's that's your money type stuff. But. Even, even our mutual friend Tyler, like he had years of street experience, and he wanted to go race, and I made him start on a two fifty. Even in today's, there were four hundreds were a thing. I made him start on a two fifty, and he thanked me for it. Yeah, he wanted to start on a one thousand. Yeah, I was like, you're gonna fucking kill yourself. Yeah, you're gonna kill it. Yeah. and it, it it you're gonna get to a point if you start raising the bar too much. And trying to make you the make beginner bikes. You make motorcycling unapproachable. Yeah. You try to make yeah. that beginner class the 660 size or bigger. It's but then you think about it from a, a market competition standpoint. If everybody's making these like kind of more aggressive bikes, making them harder and harder and harder, you see somebody like Rail Enfield come in and say, we're going to make like the dumpiest mm-hmm. dumb little bikes, and they sell a crap ton of them. Yep. You know? Because as much as motorcycling is fueled by machismo and dudes wanting thousands and going fast and stuff... There's a whole swath of people out there that do not subscribe to that at all. Motorcycling yeah. is getting more diverse and more Absolutely. like normalized mm-hmm. every year. You know, there's a lot of women starting riding. You yeah. know, and they, they don't want to start but, a big bad thousand cc bike. There's short people starting to ride. Yeah. They don't want the 33 inch seat height. You know. At the same time, though, you have to think that there are a, a ton of simps out there that 
the only thing they will buy is the big four or Ducati or BMW. Yeah. They want to stick with those big, big names, mm-hmm. and that's all they want. Yeah. And they're not going to get a Royal Enfield, you know, I and know. a Triumph. You know, personally, I wouldn't buy a Triumph. That's just Thank me. You, but that 400 does look pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> um, there, there are some people out there that just wouldn't. They're like, nope, those are brands I won't touch type yeah. stuff. So, and it happens in the car world too. Like, there's probably a few brands that you'd be like, no. Like, I wouldn't buy a Suzuki car. <laughs> I wouldn't. That's not me. Yeah. But there, there's always going to be that. So I'd be, people look at the price tag and they're like, you know what? For the same money, I would rather get, or even more money. I would rather spend more money to get a brand that I know I want yeah. type of thing. You know what I mean? No, I and, get you. And I feel like the the big names are doing that. If they do make writing more unapproachable, that's what they're going to be banking on. And they'll still make money. Yeah. Absolutely, they're they're too big to fail at this point. Honestly, I will say I do think it's cool that there are so many beginner bike options out yeah. there. I mean, you think right ten, now, ten, yeah, ten years ago, it was a Ninja Two Hundred and Fifty yeah, or go get it. a Six Hundred. Like yeah, that, that, that was, was about kind it. of yeah. all you really had. You know, um, it's super cool that now there's like all these smaller displacement bikes that are relatively approachable, and you know, people can get into the sport, into the lifestyle. But yeah, this trend of like we're making them bigger and faster, and you know. At some point, you've reached peak beginner bike. This is something yeah. I talked about in a couple videos in, the, in a couple months past where it's like, at some point, a beginner has all the tools they need in this motorcycle to accomplish learning how to ride. You don't need much more. It's at the point where you you do have a good selection of bikes right now, but like we have in our little notes here, you're, you, you're at the limit of the A2 license system yeah. for 90% of these bikes. You're yeah. at the limit. So if you up it even a skosh, all of a sudden now you're out of it. Yeah. So either they're obvious, maybe they're lobbying behind trying to get them to already change that and they're you know getting ahead of that curve because they're working both angles maybe we don't know you know one day they could come out and be like all right cool we raised the limit yeah and then all of a sudden okay cool we it stays the same um, but as of right now it's you can't move the bar anymore because yeah. you, you you push yourself out of compliance. And, you know, Americans will sit there and say, oh, well, the A2 is not relevant to me and I don't care about yeah. that. Like, I get whatever power I want. But manufacturers care a lot about A2 because that's what they're building around because yeah. that's the primary market. We, yeah. we tend to think, oh, America is number one and we're, we're the primary market, not for we, bikes. We are the singular biggest country in in uh, in sales, but not region. No, because and the, the only region, uh, the only reason that is, is because we're so freaking big. Yeah, we just have so many people in our country that we forget that Texas alone is almost as big as the whole of Europe. Type of stuff. Not not obviously to yeah. the exact size, but it takes up a big sum of Europe. A better example is like Texas by population is as big as like France. Yeah. Like just, just this one state, yeah, you know, exactly. that's pretty crazy. And that's why that region, they focus more on that region. There's like, all right, cool. Here's a bike for America. Yeah. That's why they don't care. There's like, yeah, here's a bike. But it's interesting because Europe as a giant region, which we tend to do here in America, which isn't really fair, but I mean, that has like 700 million people, you know, we have half that and we have half of that as one singular yeah. country, you know, with a relatively homogenized culture and kind of yeah. needs and stuff like that. And yeah, the the motorcycle market looks really different across the sea, but yeah, A2 is A2 and people build around that. Yeah. Which it which actually that brings up the question is they want to uh obviously comply in the A2 license system. The ZX4 does not. So why would they why would they give Europe or overseas a unlocked version in America not? Because we never had the limitation. Great question. We never had that limitation. Nobody knows. Yeah. <laughs> I, that's yeah. That yeah, I mean, it just kind of blew my own mind. There, it's a weird mm. thing that Kawasaki did with that bike. Yeah, they just did that. But yeah, the the ZX4 is one of those bikes that stretches the beginner bike envelope mm-hmm. a lot. And you're like, well, I guess you could start on it. Kawasaki seems yeah, to I mean, think you can start mean, on you it. Technically, can I mean, yeah. if it's a 400, if it was between that and another bike, I'd be like, okay, yeah, I get that. But if if there are other options, go for the other options. Yeah, you know what I mean. I don't. I'm not too sure to be honest with you. Me either. It's weird. Yeah, it's a very weird uh, uh, place that we're at right now. I feel like it's going to pivot, and I just don't know which direction it's going to go. Yeah. So in typical Yamcast fashion, we've solved nothing, and <laughs> we've just deliberated around a topic for a lot of time. Who knows? Maybe maybe they'll come out with two fifties that have fifty horsepower and be like, all right, cool. 
This is where we're at now. <laughs> didn't we? We used to have those in the 90s, didn't we? Like I have in no Japan idea. and stuff, like the CBR 250RR. I think the does 250. Does it look like I've traveled to Japan? No, it oh. does not. No. <laughs> <laughs> does not, Brandon. Um, I was stuck with my regular old carbureted 250. That's yeah. what I had. Like five horsepower. That's all I had. I didn't have 50 freaking horsepower <laughs> yeah. on my 250. <laughs> That's fair. Well, folks, let us know in the comments down below what you think about this kind of beginner bike market and what's going on with it. Um, that's our thoughts on it. But now we're going to move on to the meme contest. <laughs> Why know. is this guy out here throwing shade at Triumph? <laughs> Answer him. I just never liked. Answer him. Hold on, hold on. We, I have had you at Don't the track. Don't rope me in. I, no, I Don't am. Don't rope me in. Am. Answer him why you're throwing I have had at you at the track, and we have watched a Daytona 675 go up against all these other manufacturers, and we just go, hey, there he still is, in dead last place, and you can't deny that. <laughs> Sounds like you needed a rider mod. Uh-huh, right. Yeah, it sounds like you needed a rider mod. Right. So why haven't you been racing your race bike Triumph 675. You've been going to all the races this oh, year. Oh, wait a minute, because I've been focusing heavily on our endurance team and making sure it's leading the championship, What Brandon. have you been focusing on? Focusing on the making bike. Making sure you know where I am at all times. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Chase. No excuses. Chase, if you love it so much, you need to ride it. Chase Horn's <laughs> been putting some work on that bike. I've been putting some work on that bike. Yeah. Her tells me putting some work on that bike, making it better. You're a big component of it. <laughs> but... Putting my number one focus on the endurance bike. Wait, we get a Triumph simp and a Triumph hater. You can't. You, you're not a simp anymore. It's a you're not. A, you're not a simp anymore. I'm a big simp for Triumph no. still, though. Look at this. The true mark of a simp is getting it, not using it, and wanting more. <laughs> Yam passes the Triumph simp test with flying colors. Look at that. See. Just because you're giving one, or no, you have a loner in there. <laughs> okay, here we go. Chastity says, what are we discussing? That's a great question. We need to move on to the meme contest. That's what we're about to discuss That's what the we're meme about contest. about to get started. All right, everybody, it's time for the meme contest. If you're listening to this on Spotify or any of your other preferred podcasting platforms, you need to tune into the audio-visual portion on YouTube so you can see what is going on. That will definitely help you. If you want to join the fun and check out everything we do here, join the YamCast Discord server. Uh, that's going to be on yamanoob.co. Become a member. You get access to it. It's really great. We have, we've had like... 350 new people join up yeah. in the last couple of days so we got lots of new people in there uh don't be shy jump on in it's a ton of fun we have a lot of fun on there without further ado uh let's check out these memes let's go into picture in picture here the the memes the may mays the may mays yeah. all right here we go first up craig on with this beautiful gem here <laughs> ninja 400 if dry humping was a motorcycle it's probably a most factual picture i've seen in a long time it's kind of true, right? I mean, it's, <laughs> it is, you, so get, it's you get a little taste of what yeah. big bike energy like, is, yeah. but not, yeah, you can't do it. Not the real yeah. thing, yeah. you know. Not no. the real it's, thing. it's a very, it's very, very factual. Yes. You can't deny it. Uh, looks like this guy just got this bike. I think he's on the it stock is. tire still. Leo, Leo Vinci exhaust, nice and loud. I love to see it. That's just like the three day giveaway bike we did. That's cool. Clean, clean. All right, this next guy over here, Iron Jade, with a twenty three NT ten SP, <laughs> beautiful bike. Uh, MT10 SP for when you just can't afford an R1M. <laughs> yeah. That's facts. These are also Straight facts. Straight up. Although these are much easier and cheaper to to get. Uh, yes. R1Ms like hardly ever come up for uh -huh. sale. And when they do, the dealership's like 30 Gs. You're yeah. like, no. Yeah. I'm not. Like, I'll, take that, I'll cool. take that MT10 over there, though. Yeah, I'll take the MT10. I really want to ride one of these. The new MT10 SPs, I've heard they are fucking mint. Really? Yeah. Well, then ride one. Again, you act as if they just <laughs> come out of the sky. Yeah, they just appear in the garage, right? Yeah. That's what I thought. They just appear in the garage. All right, Mr. Drifterino with uh, the Triumph Daytona over here. Look at that. First generation <laughs> Undertale exhaust. If we're going down, at least we're dropping a nice bike. <laughs> LOL. If this is you, I love that you have like the color matched suit to that the bike. That is, uh, yeah. That's. I would like to know how much work he put into that to make sure that he matched. <laughs> It looks nice. It does. It does look cool. But I would like to know how much effort you did. Probably to, a lot to make that of effort. A lot. Is you. Um, I love this. Yeah, that's great. I don't think I would ever match my bike that much, to be honest with you. It's cool, though. All right, TJ here with this meme says, Oh, look, another black streak line <laughs> waiting for a tow. 
I do see a bunch of those on the side of the road all the time. Yeah, all the time. And, you know, and it's my, always a guy just looking there, distraught, like because it's not the first time. Yeah, he's just looking around with like a cell phone. Yeah, he's just he's just sitting there, just. I think, oh yeah, I've seen that too. Just kind of looking I'm at his here. phone. I'm here. I'm here. Like waiting. all right, just waiting, brother. You know, he's gonna be there for an hour waiting for you know, his wife to go brother. or something. Like I that. wonder what goes wrong with these because they're pretty simple motorcycles. They just have that big ass air cooled twin, and they've been making them for like thirty years. So, what breaks on them? I, I don't know. I, it's, it's a heart. No I, I don't know. I don't know. Have you ever ridden a bike like that? No. Well, I did ride Tyler's uh, was it v? Sportster. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, the the big boys are a little different, yeah. but no, I haven't ridden anything that big. No, I I don't like my you arms. Haven't ridden anything that big, huh? Uh-uh. Unfortunately, yeah. Tyrone was pretty close, <laughs> but <laughs> I didn't have the street car. I don't like my arms being above my head. I think I've realized that. All right. Uh, I don't know if these are... I think Exy here has a meme. It's just a Ducati, and it's got some biscotti kind of very crudely <laughs> photoshopped <laughs> onto there, um, which I do appreciate. I, I kind of let... Well, sometimes low-effort memes really come through. Mm-hmm. Um, this one is a bit bit too low-effort for me, I got to say. A little, a little too low. All right. I can't... For some reason on my Discord, I cannot see your full usernames. I don't know what's going on. I just see like S dot dot dot. Do you want me to go find it for you? Um, if you don't mind, Brandon. Yeah, we'll uh, I'll go find it's it for this, you. It's this incredibly, I'm, I'm sure this is some famous anime decal that I, I just don't know, and I'm outing myself here, and I, I really apologize. <laughs> You're not up on your anime? I'm not up on the anime. That no. does look like a two-stroke, though, because that exhaust is really tiny. It looks like an old two-stroke exhaust, so I can't tell what bike that is. Um, but we do we do appreciate the Where old uh, the old anime there. Oh, it's it's Miku. Is that the Miku Vocaloid thing? Why do I know that? You guys are gonna make fun of me now. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. Uh, oh, Nagatomi comes through. He says it's an N- NSR two fifty. Yep, that's right. I knew it was Shady Geek. Shady that. Geeks posted that. Okay, cool. Yeah, All right, here we go. The next meme is from Lone Star, Indian Scout Bobber. For when your back goes out more than your bike does. <laughs> Very true. There is like two inches of suspension travel on that bad boy. Ah, uh, my. Reminds me of my dad had a custom, uh, I think it was Indian, I'm not sure, but it he had airbags on it, and I was like, okay, cool, oh, that's, no. that's good for a good ride. They were rock hard. <laughs> oh my God. It was, hit a bump, just, oh, you just, I think you uh, compressed your spine, you're just like, oh my, this is not yeah. an enjoyable thing. So I test rode this custom Harley big wheel thing mm-hmm. that this guy brought in, and it had air suspension on it, and I took it out for a ride, and... I think like three or four miles before I got back, the air suspension gave out on the rear, oh. and so I just felt it kind of slowly <laughs> just going down, <laughs> and then I hit a bump, and I was like, ah, ah, just like spine <laughs> compressing, like pretty much a hardtail motorcycle. Um, it was I think ridiculous. I'd rather take a hammer to the back of it than ride something with that. <laughs> That's, That's so what awful. it felt like. It felt like, it was like, ah. Hammering my coccyx. Um <laughs> All right, Silence here drops this meme, which if I if memory serves me correctly, Silence was the winner of our 2019 Ninja 400. I'm almost positive because he does say Yamanu bike giveaway winner right there, which is pretty cool. So his meme here says, getting your first bike, light, appropriate power, weeks of research, Ninja 400. And then getting your second bike is <laughs> drugs, dad energy, and cheaper than a turbo Busa. And I think that's a Concourse 14. Look at that Why slab. do you know that? Because I've been doing this a long time. Look at that slab, Brandon. <laughs> that's that's a, that lot that's a lot of bike. What is that? Eight hundred pounds has a reverse and everything. Like <laughs> I don't think the Concourse gets up to eight hundred pounds. By the way, the Concourse fourteen has a rabid fan base. I see in the comment sections of my videos every once in a while. Really? There's like Concourse fourteen. They people. look comfy. They're like, don't get me wrong. Like, you got to ride a Concourse fourteen. I'm like, oh, try it out if I if I get the chance or whatever. You know? They look comfy. They look, look the, like the they look like you could go. Look at this; they're way up there. They look like you can get across the country oh, to go dude. have lunch to come back cross country again. Straight up, like yeah. that, it looks like it's made it for. It looks and like the kind of bike where you would go out for a lunch ride that's three hundred miles. That. and you're like, yeah, yeah. Sure. Be, uh, I'll be right back. Yeah, be right back. <laughs> be back in a couple hours, babe. You know, yeah. something like it's. It does look like it does the job. Well, I think going well, from well. a Ninja four hundred to a Concourse fourteen. Yeah, that's a bit much. Is just, is quite the yeah like you had to have like existential questions to get to that point yeah because most I, people would just say you know oh zx6 z900 you know a con you knew what you wanted in life you that's, know that you just go to, where's your concourse at 
Yeah. Yeah. Where's that? Where's I want to go get horse? that. Or you look up on eBay specifically. <laughs> you're, not, you're not looking up motorcycle and that's popping up. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, that's not popping up. But that's that's hilarious. All right. We got another Indian scout, Bob or Lone Star, dropping another one here. About as much lean angle as Fat Joe. Yeah. I'm not sure I understand that, but I know they don't lean much. No, that's that's fair. The, it looks like the pipe was yeah, about, about 30 like, degrees. You already have you know, the two inches of the travel is <laughs> yeah. just to allow just, clearance the, for the, the pipe. The pipe will barely touch the ground, yeah. <laughs> yes. All right, so uh, this user here, Brandon. R- ride like boo. Ride like boo. says, when the police are looking for a colorful KTM, I haven't seen one. It shuts the door and immediately crosses state lines. This bike is just kind of tucked away. <laughs> nope. In a dangerous little spot there. Not here. This dude posts videos all the time of him just ripping these fat wheelies on this bike. I think that's I mean, a 690 SMCR. What better bike to do it? That's a perfect bike to yeah, do it. Yeah. I feel like if you own one of these bikes and you, you don't do wheelies with it. Like, if you're you, riding you a Motard, just an, if you're converting yeah. a dirt bike to a Motard, it's, yeah, you're doing dank wheelies. I don't care. I don't yeah. care if it's two inches off the ground. It's a dank wheelie. <laughs> all right. I think this is a meme, possibly, from who is this, Brandon? Uh, Ride Like Boo again. Ride Like Boo? Yeah. <laughs> they, they found, found me. The, the cops on his ring <laughs> a camera. Continuation. A continuation. It's the Instagram story follow up. Just like, yeah, they got me. Yep. yep. All right, Ryan Ashley here has a video. Uh oh. Um, what I think riding with my love when I drive looks like. Nice. Actually, looks like. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it depends on the Triumph. I think that's how it would look like if it was on my Daytona. That's for I don't, sure. I don't see a whole lot of passengers riding on Triumphs. No, we uh, we ride alone. Hmm. You don't have a whole lot of simps to follow you? No, I guess not. <laughs> <laughs> All right, German A2 boy. He is a he has been with us for a long time. He's a master yeah. meme maker. So I, I'm expecting good things out of this one. So we'll go ahead and play this one. Uh, today we're roasting my ZX6 uh, R Psych. No, we're roasting my uh, DR600. It is um, wonderful. It's like 30 years old. It uh, loses its keys from from time to time. <laughs> you can also start it uh, with a spoon. And uh, it's very slow and it with smells and uh, it is in fact quite broken. I love the power puff oh. music. Oh. Oh. Everywhere. Uh, <laughs> said there's some cum. <laughs> Smock. <laughs> but um, what's even better is that it's got the severe engine damage now. Yeah, so I um, took out the engine and noticed there were a few things wrong, like this and... That's dirty. That's... Oh, no. Oh. Oh, oh, oh there it is. No, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. There it is. <laughs> Germany too, but what have you done? Why have you done this? Why have why have you gotten a DR six hundred from like forty years ago? Um, it's beautiful. I, I love the little like oh and that's come and yep. uh, <laughs> disregard. Uh, that was that was rough. It's covered in oil. That's a rough course, looking yeah. bike. Um, yeah, that was quite good. Squid nut here. New Kawasaki Ninja 400. For the new basic bitches who enjoy watching their new paint be scratched when they inevitably drop it. <laughs> Very true. Yeah, you get a fully fared bike as your first bike. You're pretty much begging for plastics you know, to be ruined. I would rather have the plastics be ruined than dragging my engine on the ground. Fair. That's you know I never thought about it I that can, way. I can replace plastics a lot easier than my engine. Plastics will make you sad to replace. Yeah, it's true. Or I can just get a dirt bike, fall a bunch, and then learn that way because dirt bikes are invincible, as we know. Yeah, that's unless true. unless it's a DR600, of course. This is a good one. Look at that. Suzuki in its native habitat, provided to us by Deborah Saar, <laughs> next to the garbage. Yeah. It shouldn't be next to the garbage. It should be in it. In the garbage, yeah. 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 Need a, I know need, that hurt need you need to say that you're a Suzuki simp. I am a nope. S- specific nope. Suzuki simp. No, you're not. Yes, I am no, you're not. You know why I know you're not? Because Hold on. you were Hold gushing. On. I'm not. I'm, let me let's ah. speak. You were gushing to me about that 600 at lunch today. Uh-huh. And then you have talked to me incessantly about how you're like, You'll just say this apropos out of nowhere. You'll just say, "Oh, if I was to race a thousand, I guess Suzuki Jicks a thousand. Like you'll just say that for no reason. Like I'm just existing next to you, and you turn to me and you say that. So I think you are a Suzuki simp. But as we have already discussed, uh-huh. I can't be a simp if I don't own it. True, that's right. 
I can't be a simp. I'm not you a simp. You haven't had a bike since 2018. What kind of rider are you, man? The best kind. Oh, we're make, ride. Make, have ride other people's bikes. <laughs> what are you talking about? I've lasted this you're long a, you're riding a everyone rider. else's. You're a very frugal motorcyclist. <laughs> I've ridden everyone else's, so we're good. Ah, Same. here we go. Fixed it with the rest of the car. Ah, there it is. Look at that. That's good. Okay, that makes sense. That's very that's, good. I can agree with that. All right, folks, that's going to get us through the memes here on the Discord server. Brandon, what was your favorite one, would you say? You know, I would have to say either the uh, Yamaha you know, MT-10 one or the, the, uh, one? Or the 400. Those are, those Which are 400? The, the very dry first hump one? one? Yeah. The first one? Yeah. That that one those are both good. very factual and can't deny, pretty funny. I like those, um, yeah. I, I thought this one was quite good, too. The Ninja yeah, 400 and the what, Concourse. What a change. What, what a change. change. Yeah. yeah. No, 100%. Okay. So, I'm feeling quite generous today. This is the first Yamcast. We're mm-hmm. back. I'm going to award the last four that we just talked about prizes. Uh, I'll give you guys a $100 gift card to yamminoob.co. Get whatever you want on there. Pick out t-shirt, gear, anything you need. We'll get in touch with you. Um, send Brandon a DM, mm-hmm. and we'll, we'll figure it out. Uh, that's the way we're going to do this, that I just decided right now oh, because boy. we're so prepared. Oh, boy. So now I get to silence my Discord <laughs> notifications. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the winners for today will be the very first one you saw with the Ninja 400 uh, dry humping. I don't remember your name. The MT-10 SP user as well. Uh, silence over here, doubling up. He's a Yamanu bike giveaway winner, apparently. And then also going to be winning a prize. Um, I will also give a prize to uh, German A2 Boy. Uh, that was just very, very good. Uh, you put a lot of effort into that, and um, I just feel bad for you and your bike. So we got Iron Jade with the uh, MT-10 SP meme and Craig on for the Ninja 400 meme. So we got that one, that <coughs> one, uh, German A2 Boy, and there was one more. Oh, yeah, uh, Silence with the... Yes. Uh, the, the the Concourse 14 meme. Magnificent jump between bikes. So for those of you that I just mentioned, reach out to Brandon. Um, again, thank you guys for tuning in for another Yamcast. I truly do appreciate it. I, I have wanted to bring this back for so long. I'm so happy we're bringing it back. We're getting things back in the swing of things. Yeah. Let me know in the comments below if you thought this was just a giant shit show. Uh, <laughs> I don't think it was. I thought it was pretty good. We're going to refine this, get a little bit tighter, get a little bit better. I just got to get the muscle memory back. And uh, yeah, if you enjoyed having Brandon on the podcast, let us know down below in the comments too. Uh, We'll catch you in the next one. See you later.